fun, but it's not quite that, you know, super star going to win all the tournament stats that, you know, we had once upon a time. So let's see how he performs today. In the bottom right corner, our blue Protoss player, stats. In the top left, our red Zerg from Mr. Gaming, it is Ragnarok. Uh, sorry, I completely missed G.I. Jones. Uh, 79 on the fresh new sub. Thank you so much, mate. I, I read your message. And I just uh, apparently I completely missed your sub while I was tapped out or so. As we kick off and get going into this PVZ. First of two in a row, because like I say, we will have stats versus Dark after this. Then we'll be backtracking, or then we'll continue into towards Ragnarok versus Ryung. And some other matches as well as the games continue. That is what's going on. That's the plan. As we do have ourselves stats. From what we've seen of stats, he's been so good when he can play his defense. Like, he, he has had some incredible holds in some of the matches that I've casted of him. It's really been kind of crazy at times to see just how good a defense stats can bring out, right? When things are uh, maybe looking dire. He still has that kind of defensive god kind of like... <laughs> Kind of going, just kind of got to your defense, kind of to his name. A paragon of, of defense in StarCraft 2. He is, he's so good at it. So, really expect him to uh, be able to be there. Ragnarok, though, has quite the ubiquitous style, right? Just all over the place. He's always present, ready to fight, ready to, you know, engage, trying to run by. He really is up in your face. But then, when you play against someone like Stats, does that kind of put you at a disadvantage as Ragnarok? Because Stats is so good at defending. And your style is all about attacking. And I do feel like Ragnarok trails off a bit as the game gets deeper, as the game gets longer, as the macro sets up. So, very intrigued as to what Ragnarok brings in the series, and very intrigued to see how strongly stats can kind of slap back against the aggression and just hold off and say, no, uh, not today. I feel like that's going to be probably very uh, fun to see. As a couple of queens come up, a couple of zerglings are on the way out, just going to go after a probe, and the probe already starting to take a bit of damage. And just going to be seeing the Stargate as the initial choice from stats. Probably expecting, if I had to make a guess, two, three oracles into blink. That's the style I've seen stats play a few times recently, so unless he start to change up. We did see stats playing... The other day in um, the WTL Code A uh, for the Freaks, and obviously he was actually active there and he was playing some Glaives and so on, so maybe like Oracle into Glaives. I don't know if that was just because he felt like he was the favored player already. Uh, against someone like Ragnarok, maybe he doesn't feel like he can pull Glaives off. We'll find out if it was going to be Glaives here. It would be a Star Glaives, one of my favorites. Uh, or obviously you get those a couple of Oracles out, then you get into the Twilight Council quickly, you go Glaives behind the Oracles. That's a really powerful way of setting up. of Adepts is going to shade up in towards the high ground, just going to actually commit to this shade, but there's Queens here and Lings. I guess the Adepts aren't immediately in trouble. We'll start to shade out. The Lings will think about maybe making a catch. The Queens are just getting a lot of damage done. We sink into the corner for a moment, and the Adepts do get out alive. I think the Lings maybe could have gone to threaten uh, the Adept shades and maybe caught one of those Adepts, especially because they kind of shaded or finished their shade on creep. I know the Lings don't have their speed or anything, but I feel like a missed opportunity for Ragnarok. Stats does get one drone. He's going to get two. He's going to turn for three. So he gets three in the end. It didn't look like that was going to be a hot start as it took him a moment to get the first drone kill. But again, three in the end is pretty nice. Now these adepts are kind of out in the open. But the oracle shows up as well. So we get a couple of lings. We don't lose anything yet. The few extra lings showing up now that the oracle's deactivated its uh, pulsar beam. Just trying to make this as good a trade as possible. As unfortunately, it's kind of the wrong adept in the front there. The low HP one is the one taking the initial bits of damage. And. Yeah, the Oracles will have to come back to help clean this up, and they will activate. I mean, Lings for Adepts early. The Adepts cost a bit of gas, but both players are invested into units there, and I actually don't mind it so much for the Protoss, because, yeah, you're losing some gas, but you also killed units of the Zerg that could have very easily been drones instead. So, actually, it feels like that's not so bad of a trade as it might otherwise be. Just see the... Triple Oracle joining together, going to start to move out. Just going to have the uh, Queens in position. Oracle's taking damage pretty much immediately. A 
Oh, that's gonna be one dead oracle, unfortunately. He gets four. He's gonna go back in for five kills. Okay. That's now eight kills early in the game. One oracle dead. These are dead. Skin caught by the speedlings. We should shade two out alive at least. So we do keep a couple of them up and running. As the oracles are for the moment stuck in the back left corner of the main. A lot more gates coming out from stats. As he went into just extra gates in a robo. It kind of feels like Seth has a very aggressive follow-up planned. Prism, get a lot of units going. He just doesn't have a Twilight, which is very interesting considering he has 300 gas available right now. Oracles get two more drones. Stats, stats, stats. What are we planning? Prism coming up. Stalker's warping in. That's where his gas goes. Like I say, no blink or anything. He has a few sentries too, so he has the force fields available. This is going to be all about this attack from stats. It's not like a super low work account from stats 56, although he has cut at 56. He is pretty serious about just being there on this three base saturation with the limited gas mining. Ragnarok building the spire, so he definitely doesn't know he's under attack. There's no need to build the spire if you knew this sort of attack was coming your way. That's a really bad overlord to lose. He's going to be supply blocked at one of the worst possible times. Five overlords building, but not ready yet. And Stats is attacking forward with a ton of units that hits earlier than Ragnarok's expected with this amount of units because there's no Twilight, there's no Blink. This has been powering up into those extra gates so much sooner. And straight up, the third hatchery is just going to die unless, well, we will turn and fight these Zerglings. Why the hell wouldn't you? Traps the Queens in as well. You can get the third hatch at any point right now and just, you know, focus on getting some more units. And the Queens will transfuse the hatchery, so maybe I'm a little bit incorrect in being able to get it at any point, but I still think we've got the damage output to get it if we want to focus it. Oracle's even adding with a little, uh, uh, adding a little bit more DPS as well. Prism dodges out of the way of the Biles. And the moment this comes into, like, Ravages being attacked, that's going to be troublesome. I mean, maybe if you got to, like, a good amount of muters, there could be something there for you as Ragnarok, because Stats isn't going to have Blink to help defend or anything, but is there a realistic way you get to a good amount of muters off of a dead third hatchery and currently spamming Roach Ravages to stay alive? Stats is going to build the Twilight and the Forge as a follow-up to this, starting to look towards, hey, how can I actually upgrade these units? How can I actually make these units be a little bit better for myself in the very near future? And as the Queen comes in, a couple of shots come out. Just seeing ourselves having stats all the way back home. I mean, with this amount of stalkers, you absolutely just go blink and plus one. I mean, successful start. How good was it overall? Like I say, now your own tech is delayed. You delay the Zerg onto three bases for a bit longer because he was already building a fourth, so the fourth kind of becomes the new third. I haven't rebuilt the uh, base that went down just yet, as we do also still have the prism up that could maybe go and harass. Maybe that's one way to get a little bit more done, right? So going out on the map with this prism, get some harassment done. Could actually be a very real option in terms of getting something extra dealt here uh, throughout the course of this. Stalker sentries and an immortal join up out the front. That prism just going to patrol back and forth a little. A couple of gates on the way through. The immortal still coming out. The oracles go back around to the left hand side. And we are just going to have ourselves the jump onto a couple of drones here. So, uh, okay. Are we just giving up the oracles? I mean, keep one alive. It's one of those moments where it feels like, is it really important to get a bunch of drone damage? Not really. In fact, I'd say it's more important to have information with the oracles. So losing those, a little painful, but maybe it doesn't matter too much as this big attack is coming around no matter what. Stats. Looking his way through Overlords. Ragnarok's already supply block six. Overlords on the way at once. This is the second time this game we've seen a whole chunk of Overlords being built at the same time. We do uh, lose one probe trying to build a fourth. And the stats has another warp in the Stalkers. Now Blink has just finished. And we have plus one attack upgrade finish too. Uh, this should be very difficult for Ragnarok to fight. If he can fight it, stats with the confident Blink forward. Maybe it doesn't help that his uh, Guardian Shields in the back aren't really protecting against anything right now. His Overlord spawn, they're going to start dying, although he honestly has plenty, especially after losing a few units. And Stats will just use the Force Fields to zone and to hold this position. As, yeah, I mean, this base at the very least is going to go down. There are probes dying across the map. A little run by there, but it's not going to do enough to change much. Stats opens the Korean Royale Season 2 for himself with a map victory over Ragnarok. You're not dipping into the prize money, right? You're... But double dipping into being a legend. Something like that. But whatever feeling you get when you support these tournaments, you can double dip into that. Bottom right, Ragnarok, top left, stats, game two of our series here. As we get things underway. 
peacefully for a few moments as Stats just gets a little ground gateway down, gets ready to set the expansion up and all the rest. Hatch gas coming through, probably going to nibble on the back of the minerals just a little bit, just trying to be a little bit annoying in the early stages. Again, just do what you typically do when your probe is out across the map. You get in there, you nibble, you just cause some frustrations, cause some trouble, just wherever you might be able to. Nexus comes down. <laughs> Obviously, we're expecting that. We're probably just expecting a uh, Stargate here as well, right? This was Nexus before core. Sometimes you can see that's a little bit greedier in certain scenarios instead of core than Nexus. In PvZ, I think Nexus before core though is pretty pretty straight up. There's not a lot of reasons you need to rush the core down. It's more so in PvT where you get core before Nexus. It gets you a unit to help with the Reaper faster and all that kind of stuff. But there is no PvT on the docket today for stats. It's all PvZ. That's just patrolling out the front with that probe, keeping an eye out, keeping a check on just what's going on for the early moments. As we are in full build mode right now. Ling's coming around, gonna go chase a probe away. He's just gonna hunt that down for a couple of moments here. Try to see what we can do. Hatchery going to land onto the third base as well. It's so just going to get that set up. Again, the Adept, the Warp Gate, all of that coming through. Now Zergling Speed and a couple of drones continue out as well. As our probe comes all the way up towards the about left-hand side, it's just getting back in towards the Natural. Stargate is already finished. Our first Void Ray is on the way. Warp Gate is about halfway done too. I'm just going to be seeing the Adepts. Joining together, Queen already taking some shots. And again, a couple of Lings, a couple of Drones. All getting produced as the Adepts continue across, but the Lings will be there to threaten them. And of course, then the Shades will not commit. That doesn't really make sense to commit in that sort of a scenario, right? As the Adepts do grab a Creep Tumor at the front, though, slowing down a little bit of the spread out to the forward positions. A couple of Spore Crawlers are coming up and just seeing ourselves getting this probe back around the left-hand side, trying to get a Nexus down. So just again, little bits and pieces are getting set. Do you see Zerglin's going to run their way to the upper left-hand corner, and they're going to chase their way in here. Again, she's going to get us around on that base. Void Ray activating. The Voider off the Stargate is something which is a good way to mix things up nowadays. It's not really weird anymore. It's honestly been seen a fair amount recently. Uh, it's just, like I say, a good way to mix things up as we have Queens off Creep chasing. Not enough to kill it. it was a good call from Stats. Wanted that second Overlord. The sooner you get it, the more damage it does to Ragnarok, who now, four minutes in the game, supply blocked and building six Overlords at a time. It's so expensive. It slows you down so much in your build order. So that Void Ray has actually caused so much chaos that's really going to throw Ragnarok into a little bit of a tough position. As now our Void Ray works its way through an Overlord on the northern side of the map as well. So continues to pick through that. That Overlord will fall. And behind this we see the Fleet Beacon. We see the Stargate. Those are coming up right away now. If you can, the second Stargate, obviously, just going to mean we get to go towards carriers, and that's the sort of thing where when you start off badly like this as Ragnarok, any sort of timing window is going to be much kind of, you know, kind of deteriorated for you, right? It's just not going to be existing. And so if you don't have that, then moving into this fast Fleet Beacon tech from stats is very likely to go unpunished, so I love his choice. He's trying to get into the back there, the Ling's in position. We are going to be seeing the carrier coming up, plus one tear, weapons coming in. And typically this has been, when we've seen this kind of style recently, you kind of go for, you know, four carriers, and then you transition more so into a ground army afterwards. You already have the carriers up, they get annoying, they force a response, then you get a ground army to support them, and it just becomes 
very strong throughout. As our depths avoid, we're going to be gathering together. Pepperino, thank you so much for the six month resub on the Prime. Thank you for using the Prime on the channel today. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Things still gathering. Plus one missile. The road speed coming out. The spire is building. Another gateway going down at the front as well. So just getting our wall offs ready. And again, waiting for these carriers to pop on out and to see whether or not they're going to be able to cause some trouble here. We have the Adepts, the Voidre, the Oracle in position. The Lings get chased away for a couple of moments. The carrier is still being brought through. The first one is now out. The second one popping. And we're just putting all the Chrono Boosts onto these. As long as Ragnarok doesn't get a scout, it's very bad for him. However, he is building a Spire. I wonder if he kind of knows, even without seeing the main base. I wonder if he just sort of feels like, well, what else are you doing? I've not really seen much else. Maybe he knows a little bit about what Stats likes to do in terms of build orders. Obviously, it gets knocked down. Twilight Council Forge still coming up. The Spire is about to be done from Ragnarok. If he just goes muters, which is kind of what he wanted to do, pre you know, previous game as well, right? Before he got denied. If he goes muters, it ain't pretty. Like, muters do not trade super well against the carriers. And the carriers can do pretty well against the muters. Now, of course, the carriers can't keep up with the muters. But the other thing is, you already have double Stargate to build Phoenix out of. But no, it seems as though Ragnarok has figured out what Stats is up to. It's Corruptors. And that means Corruptors are going to be out before Stats is even across the map. And the carriers the first time. That's terrifying. There's a very real possibility here where stats starts moving across the map now with the carriers and because the corruptors can just two shot the carriers because there's that many of them you just lose like two carriers before you can even recall it really depends how quickly the recall comes down lings are going to counter attack at the same time stats has units in position there stats does begin that you know transition beyond the first four carriers and yep this is bad because you're not even really stacked up we're actually just shy of the two shots uh, recall, two carriers go down. Very nearly a third as well. Honestly, if he'd recalled instantly, it wouldn't have been so bad, but he didn't have all the carriers stacked up, right? So because they're not all stacked up, instantly you're going to, you know, have to kind of pull them together to get the recall on all of them. And yeah, this is actually just going to be, like I say, Ragnarok has figured it out. There, there was something he knew for sure. Like there's something he got uh, kind of figured out, like I say. He's going to now kill the Robo, so no prism popping out. And we are building a lot of roaches because you've, you've just killed two carries for free, essentially, at the start of this game. you put yourself already into an absolutely incredible position. Uh, yeah, Stats needs to kind of stabilize, but it just ain't happening. He's not A again the time, and B, I feel like he's just a little plus to the Corruptors. Find the carriers again! There goes another one. Number three is already killed. We are going to try for number four, even with this uh, super battery up. It should be enough. Number four goes down. Stats does not have an army beyond this. This is going to be 1-1. One, one. We're going to a game three for the first time today. And the stats and Ragnarok will get tied. Ragnarok just figured it out. He knew exactly what stats was doing. Even without scouting the main base, he was aware. And with that knowledge, he made the perfect call. And boom. He just absolutely shuts it down. It just wasn't even close once he had that game. As we have in the top right corner. going to start things off with the red Protoss player. This is going to be stats. He takes on the blue Zerg in the bottom left corner of the map. It is Mystery Gaming's Ragnarok. Nelaton, thank you so much for the 16 month resub on the Prime. Welcome back. Good to see you. Thank you very much indeed as we get ourselves underway on this one. Game number three. Ragnarok getting that early hatchery down so he doesn't have to take a third base location or anything. It's just going to get that set up kind of correctly, basically, to start off with. And not uh, making that concern or anything is a very positive uh, experience. As you just have our probe now going to start nibbling away at a drone. Just trying to find a little bit of pressure, a little bit of damage, whenever we can do so.
probe nibbles at the drones a little longer and just going to be seeing this probe continues to kind of jump around for a little while. Extractor goes down on the main base. A hatchery is on the low, low ground, of course, that's about to finish. Yeah, now Cybercore just coming up to being about halfway through. There's a couple queens and a couple lings continue out and about. Probe is going to go out across to the upper right hand side, maybe now. Things are popping soon, so you don't want to stick around too long, right? You want to make sure you get the probe away, but looks like he maybe wants to try and just confirm how many lings show themselves at first as well. That's a possibility. There's the Stargate opening again from stats. Well, we definitely don't expect him to go uh, double Stargate Fleet Beacon. So that's uh, very unlikely. After such a good start, it was kind of a shame for stats too, because it started off so well with the Overlord kills that Supply Block Ragnarok, he built five, six Overlords at once. That's not what's meant to happen at that stage of the game. So to kind of have that happen was, was really bad, and obviously stats didn't do anything to take advantage of that or anything really. He just kind of went along with his build. It should have still been just like a nice little edge for him. Yeah, it was a little rougher than he maybe wanted it to be as a couple lings. Gonna make their way up into the main mineral lines, try and see if they can find anything here. As this adept is gonna start chasing these zerglings around. Coming around the bottom side. Gonna jump in. First ling going down already. This little zergling nibbling after a probe in the main. It's gonna take some damage as well. That zergling is gonna get pushed away to the sides. And it's going to eventually not die. At some point it might die. The zergling that survived. The great infiltration of the Pearl Main of 2023 finally goes down. It stuck around for a while. I don't think there's really much more information to pick up in that I uh, pick up on in that scenario, but it's still nice to kind of keep yourself around for as long as possible. And you see an Oracle of Stats already working its way to the bottom where it will make its way towards these couple of queens. Queens are gonna be there. Does turn that Oracle away pretty much immediately. Gainlings, the queen's continuing out. The Zergling speed's still coming up. That Oracle just keeps pushed away for the moment. We are going to be seeing the other Oracle coming around. Just going to be seeing the Zergling still making their way up to the top right-hand side. It's the first bit of pressure. The Adepts will hold their own over there as Triple Oracle is about to be fully set up. Oracle 3 is the one currently building. And there's the Twilight Council follow up with the stats. So, very different to that first game where he went Robo and then for that kind of six gate attack. Finds one more drone. It's a dead Oracle, though. A little bit too aggro, maybe, kind of flying through instead of backing away. Just that Queen from the main base able to get the nab on an Oracle just shuts down one of the numbers. And now, melee upgrade and a Baneling Nest going to be the choice here from Ragnarok. So, we see him setting straight up into that kind of Ling Bane follow up that is definitely become more popular as of late. There's definitely been kind of a big turn in uh, or turn up in terms of just playing Ling Bane heavily. Now, Sad actually has a Twilight, but not a Forge. Is that indicative of anything? As we actually see, this next Oracle's already taken quite a few shots. There's a Spore here as well. If that retargets onto the low HP Oracle, which it finally does, it will go down. They've killed four drones, but I tell you what, these Adepts are still alive. Causing some trouble over here. They put a lot of damage out onto one of these Queens, which will not finish off. The Adepts trying to get away, but now in the open should be surrounded by lings we recall and all three will recall home so that is a good get away but well done as our seven drones killed i mean the, the worker damage is there 50 to 48 workers in that regard stats should be feeling pretty reasonable stats should feel pretty good about things right now as our resonating glaives continues up the melee upgrade is still coming through that's going to be the the different kind of follow-up as what i was saying before and it's interesting that he's going to go so aggressive still with these Adepts trying to find damage right now. But is then also going to be using these Adepts with Glaives. Like, it's almost... It almost doesn't make sense, right? Because it's like, oh, you, if you give up these Adepts now, you're not going to have as many to attack with with Glaives. Also, triple Oracle into Glaived Adepts doesn't usually happen. So it, it's becoming a very intriguing little scenario. One where you kind of look at this and you say, well, you know what? These Adepts survive. They cause a lot more trouble. The Banelings are going to have to be so good for Ragnarok. The Banelings have a huge role to play here. They are absolutely necessary to see some success. 
find out if they can uh, deliver on that. The strength of the Banelands against this kind of a build is that obviously there's not going to be like a follow-up of, uh, you know, Adept Super immediately off a of Prism. So once you use your first round of Banes against something like 4-Gate Glaives, you know, you don't have the next round of Banelands ready. You will have more time to prepare Banelands between kind of rounds of Adepts. Uh, stats. And it seems like he's not going to send anything. It seems like he's actually pretty content to just chill. He's actually got to work a lead. And yeah, he's just going to go into charge of all things, so... Open in some stalkers. Hasn't got uh, blink or anything, right? This is now glaives and charge. One interesting little situation. I don't disagree with him not building, uh, uh, going with the adept attack, because I almost feel as though maybe Ragnarok was already super prepared because he'd been taking so much damage, he was forced into building a lot of units anyway. So maybe you, you don't try and capitalize on that in that you know because of that reason. And now you just sort of move into charge, Temple Archives, we just start to play into that kind of more typical Zealot Archon style. Stasis Ward here will just get killed off by the Queen. A little bit of lost mining time created by the Oracle, but no real advantage, no real grab. That's going to move forward. What if these Stalkers can, you know, soak up some Bane shots and then the Zealot Adept can just shred after? We have a few Archons as well. That's actually kind of a scary push to deal with right now. It's actually a pretty darn scary push to deal with. There's a good amount of tanking ability in this army as well. That ain't it. The Stalkers in the front is not exactly ideal against the Lings. Kind of wanted these Stalkers to help against the Banelings, which now the Archons may be here to help out with. Yeah, this wasn't a great start from Seth. Honestly, if these Stalkers were not caught like that and it was a couple of Archons in the front, he just got a little bit too far forward, a little bit too quickly. Good grab from Ragnarok, maybe finding himself one of the few moments he could to help make this a little bit better for himself. We do see one Bailing trying to find and does find a good group of Zealots. Zealots taking a lot of damage. Archons are going to go down, and I think the Hydras in the back are probably going to be enough here. This attack of stats is not working out. And behind uh, during all of this, Ragnarok is just on his way to Lurk again. So he's actually going to have Lurkers in the next few moments as well, on top of everything else. It really feels as though Ragnarok finds himself a... Uh, Uh, a turnaround in this game after such a weak start. Stats' follow-up just didn't really work at all. Pops the super battery here to play defense. These things are just going to back away, don't want to waste themselves. Stats is still warping in aggressively, still wants to send it, but not immediately convinced that he's going to be able to find success with that. Lings and Hydras is going <laughs> to, even a Banling going to help knock down some rocks apparently. Stats, man, he's just... I mean, his actual army supply is not bad. He loses 13... Oh, God, 19 probes here. That's the entire third base mineral line. He's got a lot of money that he just can't spend as well, and he's building a fourth. He's trying to spend those minerals. How many gateways are we on? Ten? He's going to have a lot of zealot reinforcements at the very least as he moves his way around the right. I'm just worried that this army dies so quickly because, again, a lot of it's very zealot heavy. The bailing should deal well with that. See what the Archons can do. The thing is, you've got to put the Archons at the front against the Banes, but then you're exposing them to the Hydras without the Zealots tanking. And that's where this army's going to fall apart, and I think Ragnarok truly does just have plenty. GG's. Ragnarok is going to win it out against Stats. But it's such a hopeful start for Stats, not just in this Game 3, but just in the series in general. And 